Um, so uh, I'm Ben, and I'm going to tell you about a series of increasingly silly things I've done to uh, make an app work when the network is bad. Um, this photo, by the way, is of uh, some of my coworkers um, climbing on the roof of the house that we all lived in in Ethiopia. Um, uh, it was fun. It turns out the roof could barely support our weight. Um, I thought it was kind of an appropriate image. Um, so uh, for some context, um, I work on an app called Wave, which is a mobile money system. So imagine you live in a village in, say, like the Somali region of Ethiopia, and your local bank, local in quotes, is like three hours away. Um, so with mobile money, um, instead of going to like withdraw your money at that bank branch, um, you could withdraw at like, you would find a local shopkeeper who's signed up to be a WAVE agent. Um, and you can withdraw your cash at that agent. Um, and they would give you like their like spare cash on hand and we would reimburse them later. Um, so if you wanted to be like really stereotypical startup bro, you could call it Uber for bank tellers. Um, anyway, we also have this cute penguin mascot. Um, so uh, the first problem we ran into while we were trying to build this was that um, a lot of our biggest users were in really rural areas. Um, the Somali region in general is pretty um, non-urbanized. Uh, so this is my coworker Ahmed taking his uh, motorbike full of cash across a river to reach one of our remotest agents in East Ime. Um, and the other thing about Ethiopia is that there's only a single telecom, um, Ethiotel, which is a state-owned monopoly. Um, and it's really bad. So in many of these um, more rural areas, mobile data would be basically totally down for most of the day um, and only working in like the early morning and late evening. Um, so fortunately, during those other times, there was something else that did still work, which was SMS. Um, so we decided to use that instead. We would take all the network requests that our app was sending, um, and instead of sending them over mobile data like normal people, um, we just squeezed them down until they fit inside a text message. Um, so a wrinkle with this is that text messages obviously aren't very big. Um, we wanted to fit everything inside a single message because um, otherwise like piecing them back together would be really hard. And um, we had to encode the data in like the set of 64 characters that um, are actually uh, like safe to be used and interpreted in text messages. Um, so each of those, that means um, if a character has 64 options, um, it can represent like six bits per character. Um, and uh, that meant that with like the 151 characters we had, we got about 113 bytes for our messages, um, which is not great, but uh, you can fit a lot in 113 bytes if you try hard enough. Um, so I hope you remember that uh, log base two equation because it will return as like the final boss. Um, anyway, uh, so the other wrinkle after we like packed all our messages down was actually building this thing. Um, so at first we thought to ourselves, oh, we can use Twilio like we always do for this kind of thing. Um, well, it turns out that the whole like state-owned monopoly telecom thing also made Ethiotel a pain to integrate with. Um, so as you can see, Twilio does not let you even receive messages from Ethiopia, just like at all. Um, instead of doing that, we had to build our own SMS integration uh, from scratch. So that meant we needed a computer that was connected to Ethiotel's internal network. Um, and that meant it had to be inside the country. And that meant we needed our own data center. Uh, well. Uh, for some value of data center. So this building was our actual data center. Um, our servers are running in a little closet off to the right of the frame here. Um, it ain't much, but it's home. Thankfully, it did have one nice thing, which was a backup generator uh, for the many times that the municipal power went down for eight plus hours at a time. Um, but uh, sadly, the backup generator also often broke. Um, and at that point, we would need to fail over to our backup backup system uh, which is that our customers would call our employees' personal cell phones, and we would use Slack slash commands to enter their transfer details. Um, OK, so uh, that worked fine for like some value of fine <laughs> for a while. But soon, we started having an even worse problem, um, which is that like even during normal periods, our agents couldn't do transactions fast enough because they were spending too much time staring at the loading spinner on their phones. Um, even in the areas with relatively good network, like Gigiga, the capital. Um, so when I tested in Gigiga, um, I found that pings were taking something like five seconds, which is like a normal uh, ping time. Uh, but our apps requests were taking more like 30 seconds. And that was confusing to me. 
Um, we were sending like somewhat more data than just a, a, a the ping command. But remember, it all fit in a single SMS, so it wasn't that much data. So to explain why this is going on, um, I need to take a detour to explain how normal mobile apps do network requests. Um, you think of it as using the protocol HTTPS, but um, that's actually made of a stack of a few different protocols that operate at different layers of abstraction. So the, the lowest level protocol is called IP for internet protocol. And that gives you only a single operation, um, which is do your best to send this small packet of data to this given address. Um, but it, like the packet is allowed to fail. You can just sort of drop it on the floor if you feel like it. Um, so on top of that, um, there's built TCP, transmission control protocol, um, which gives you two things that IP doesn't. One of them is reliability. So um, you know that the sender received the packet. And the other is um, unbounded size. So TCP lets you send a potentially infinite stream of data. Then um, HTTPS uh, runs on top of TCP, but it's actually uh, within that, it's a stack of two other different protocols. Um, so uh, the lower level is TLS, Transport Layer Security, um, which uh, is like TCP, but the stream is encrypted uh, so that the data is only readable by the intended recipient. And then on top of that is HTTP, um, good old HTTP, uh, which gives you the, um, actually lets you say like, get me the document at this URL, and then you've got a document. Or if you're a mobile app, you can abuse that to mean things like send a payment and like the payment worked. Um, okay, so because these protocols are all stacked on top of each other like this, um, that introduces quite a bit of overhead. So TCP requires you to send um, an empty packet back and forth before uh, you, an empty IP packet that is back and forth before you start sending actual data. Um, then, uh, on top of that, TLS adds an additional two back and forths uh, to do things like public key exchange and cipher suite negotiation. Um, and so it's not actually until the fourth packet round trip that you can start sending the data that you wanted to send in your HTTP request. And that's why our requests were so slow. Um, if a single packet round trip like ping would take uh, five or 10 seconds, um, then these three like round trips that do nothing for us at the beginning of this sequence um, are adding 15 to 30 seconds of overhead. So can we do better than that? Um, well, yes, uh, these intermediate protocols are giving us a lot of stuff that we don't need. Um, so in our case, we're talking to a single server that we know ahead of time. And that doesn't mean, that means we don't need key exchange or cipher suite negotiation. Um, and because we'd already packed our data down to fit inside a single SMS, um, it also fits inside a single IP packet. So we don't need the stream abstraction that TCP provides us. So um, in order to like uh, slim down our protocol, we ended up building our own based on a different lower level protocol called UDP, which stands for um, Unreliable Datagram Protocol. So that's a very thin wrapper around IP that doesn't incur any additional round trips. Um, unfortunately, as the name might suggest, uh, UDP sacrifices one thing that we do need, which is uh, reliable delivery. So UDP packets are allowed to be dropped, just like IP packets. Well, uh, implementing reliable delivery the right way is seemed hard. So um, we took the coward's way out and uh, just sent every packet and response four times. Um, uh, and that pretty much worked. OK, um, so UDP worked great for us for a while. Um, until a point later when we started getting taxi drivers to use Wave to accept payments. So these drivers often worked in a downtown area where um, there were so many people on the network that um, mobile data was too congested even for UDP to work well. Um, and uh, because the customer was sitting in their car waiting for the payment to finish before they got out, um, SMS was too slow for this use case. Uh, by the way, the taxi product was in Senegal, and that's why there's water in this picture. Um, this is the fish market near where I lived. OK, um, so fortunately, we have one more weird protocol up our sleeve, which is USSD, Unstructured Supplementary Data. Um, so USSD is primarily used um, in developing countries. Uh, and it's used for things like uh, topping up your prepaid airtime on your phone. Um, so you would like buy a scratch card at the corner store, and it would have some magic digits that you dial. And then you dial them, it pops up a loading spinner. And eventually, you get a text box that's like, you've got airtime. Um, at the protocol level, it works pretty similarly to SMS, but the traffic is prioritized more highly because um, the customer just paid the telco money and like the telco probably wants to like receive it. 
Um, and also they're looking at a loading spinner. Um, so we decided to try sending a request over USSD. Um, so unfortunately, uh, USSD has even worse message size limitations than SMS. It actually goes through the same parts of your phone stack as when you dial a phone number. Um, and believe it or not, phone numbers are limited to a mere 98 characters on the network that we tested, um, of which nine were consumed by our prefix. So um, furthermore, the dial string needs to be numbers. Um, so uh, each number gives you 3.32 bits. Um, it turns out the log base two formula works with fractional um, bits per character as well. Um, and that works out to about 36 bytes if you do the math. Um, so that's cutting it really close. Um, so I wanted to see if it was possible to use any alphabetic characters instead. Um, I tried the docs for this, but of course, um, nobody had foreseen possibly wanting to abuse USSD in this way. Um, so I was out of luck. And that meant um, the next step was source diving. Um, so Android is open source. You can just read most of the source code of the um, Android operating system on the internet. Um, and that meant this, this turned out actually to be relatively easy to track. Um, but I'm going to go through it fairly quickly because it's not that exciting. So I'll just uh, like dive through some garbage wrapper layers. And um, it turns out uh, that, so eventually I found that um, the, the operating system was sanitizing any number that was dialed with this is dialable, dialable function, which allows digits 0 through 9, the asterisk, the pound sign, the plus sign, and this wild thing, um, which turns out to be uh, the letter N. Um, so uh, I don't know why. I don't know why N is wild, but it is uh, pretty wild. Um, so where does that leave us? Um, well, the asterisk and the pound sign have like special USSD meanings to like a piece of middleware. Um, so we couldn't use those. Um, the plus sign didn't work, and none of my coworkers remembers why it didn't work. Uh, but the character N works, so we've gotten ourselves one whole extra character, uh, taking us up to 3.45 bits per character and 38 bytes. Woo! Um, so not a huge gain, but uh, worth celebrating. This is us doing a traditional Somali dance. Um, so I thought I'd close by explaining where we ended up with on each of these things. Um, we're not using USSD today because it requires deals with every telecom that you use it with. Um, uh, and some of them run competing mobile money systems. We're not using SMS because in Senegal, internet is like mostly good enough. Um, and that Senegal is where most of our business is today. Um, we do still use UDP, um, but uh, the next version of HTTP, the normal protocol that everyone uses, um, contains many similar optimizations to the ones that we made. So we're um, excited to replace it with something like slightly more normal uh, once that's mature. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a fishing boat doing donuts into the sunset, because um, that's how I felt when I finished this project. Um, great. All right. Well, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, you can find the slides at bencoon.net slash base 11 and some links to further reading resources. Um, and um, thank you so much. It was fun to tell you about this.